Hello and welcome to my ninth video lesson in using Blender 2.6. Today I'm going to be covering making animation in Blender, so making objects move over time. Um, and we'll be able to also edit that animation as well. So let's get started. When Blender first uh, loaded up on your computer for the first time, there was a what it was called a timeline at the bottom of your screen. It was a window, and it let us make keyframes and um, and change um, the, the position of objects uh, over time. I don't have that anymore because I got rid of that because I don't need it for most of my modeling purposes. But I'm going to get it back now. So I'm going to press T to get rid of that tool shelf because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to Let's see, we're actually, let's, let's right click and say split area and divide this 3D viewport into two. And I'm going to split the area again. And so we have three windows instead of just having one large viewport. Oops, I clicked and moved my 3D cursor. Okay, I'm going to change this middle window into a timeline. And I'm going to change the bottom window into what's called a dope sheet. A timeline um, has a play has a playhead, excuse me, uh, as does the dope sheet. So you can see they kind of both represent, um, well, progression of time. Um, the timeline by default has or shows 250 frames, frame one all the way up to 250. You can change those numbers by clicking in these areas. So I can click on there and type a thousand, and now I have access to up to a thousand frames, and I can change this area as, as much as I want. I can even start at a later keyframe as well. I'm going to change this back to 250, because that's not a bad number to start with. Now, if this is the timeline, and this shows you a, a progression of time, and we're going to be making keyframes. Uh, in other words, when we position an object, we're going to set a keyframe there that describes that object's location, that object's rotation, and that, lob that object's scale at a certain point in, point in time. And then we're going to go to a different point in time and set that object's location and rotation and scale. I'm going to call it loc rot scale for short. Um, then we'll have an animation because there'll be, uh, well, the objects will be in different positions at different times. And the computer will automatically fill those, fill in the um, in between frames automatically. So, what is the dope sheet for then? Well, when we make a keyframe, so I'm going to go back to the first frame of my animation, the frame number one. I'm going to turn on my record button, and I'm going to move my cube. I'm going to press G to grab and put my cube on the left-hand side of the screen. And you'll notice as soon as I did that, because I had the record button turned on, it put a yellow line on my uh, timeline, and it also put some orange-yellow um, diamonds on my dope sheet. Those are all keyframes, but they're really just one keyframe, because we just made one keyframe at frame one of that cube, telling us that, or telling the, the file in Blender that um, that cube is at that location, and it's that size, and it's that it's rotated uh, zero degrees um, at frame one. Now I'm going to move my playhead, the green bar, up to frame. Well, I can tell over here in our properties window. Let's see if I can find it really quick. That our frame rate is 24 frames per second. So I'm going to go back over into my timeline and zoom in by scrolling up. And I'm kind of just scrolling over by holding down my middle mouse button and dragging, or I can use the scroll bar. And I'm going to go to frame 24. So that's exactly one second. My playhead is at frame 24. I'll zoom in on this one too, inside the dope sheet. And I'll move my cube to the other side of the screen. And because the record button is still turned on, it made another set of keyframes, which is actually just one keyframe. And so I've got two different keyframes um, describing two different location, rotation, and scale um, of the same cube. So now if I scroll in between, you'll see it's actually made an animation. We've got our cube over on the left at frame 1, and at frame 24, we've got it over there. And that's basically animation. Um, you'll look down here in the dope sheet, and you wonder, why do we have two? Like, why do we have a timeline, and why do we have a dope sheet? Well, the dope sheet um, in animation, it's actually been around for a long time. A dope sheet was used to plan out animation. So if there was a whole scene where a character needs to be animated, they would make a dope sheet first to kind of plan where the all the objects or the character's main poses were going to be 
uh, a long time. So they could keep track of, you know, how they were doing, uh, if they were going to be getting to or have an, a character being drawn to a certain position by a certain time. Um, otherwise, you can imagine uh, making thousands and thousands of drawings um, in an animation would kind of run amok if they didn't plan it out ahead of time. So that's what the dope sheet is for. But in 3D, uh, the more practical aspect of it, or the, the, the way it's applicable, is that you can actually select and move and even delete keyframes in the dope sheet. So my animation was about a second long, 24 frames, frame 1 to, to frame 24. And I'm going to actually select the keyframes at frame 24. And you'll notice that I just right clicked and it selected all of them. That's because it is really just one keyframe. Um, we can shrink down the cube and it'll show us um, that there's one keyframe there. And there's a summary one as well, but it's really just one keyframe. And I'm going to, so I have that selected, it's yellow. I'm going to press G to grab with my mouse in that area, and you'll see that I can actually click and drag um, that keyframe a long time. And I have to left click to let go. So I'm going to go to frame maybe, well I can't really tell right now because I'm not zoomed in. Let's go over to frame uh, 24, so 48. We'll make it two seconds. And that is on frame, frame 48. I was lucky. Okay, so I just doubled the length of my animation. So now if I scroll through it, um, it's twice as slow. And I can really tell that by going back to frame 1 and then pressing play. So that took about um, two seconds to play. It'll depend on the speed of your computer and how well Blender is running. Uh, and that could be partly your graphics card as well. So that's animation. I'm going to go ahead and make a few more keyframes. So I can go in between the two keyframes that I made. And I might make my cube jump a little bit. So it starts right there on the ground. I'm going to make it go up in the air a little bit. So I'll press G and grab uh, and put it up there and put it back on the ground and go a little bit further in time and put it up and well maybe that's too far along. I'm going to be back up again. I'm going to zoom out and pan and zoom back in. So let's take a look. Oh, that one needs to be up in the air. And one more back down on the ground. So the key to animation is to decide where something is going to be, but also at a certain time. Um, and with that, I'll leave you to it. In fact, one more note. Um, after you're done animating, so you want to go and change something else in your scene, make sure that you turn off the record button. Otherwise, you might animate things that you don't intend to animate. Uh, if I, I can go back and always change my model, um, but just make sure that you don't have the record button turned on while you're making any changes that aren't going to be animated. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.